this is Debbie from Lime Doodle Design and today for my Doodling with Debbie feature for Samsa Stamp I have this die cut winter wreath card to share with you inspired by the front cover of a closed catalogue. Inspiration is for sure all around us but don't you just love when it literally falls at your feet or at least on your doormat? I'm not sure if you have this clothing company fat face where you are but as soon as I saw this catalogue the front cover drew me in and with the muted dusky shades, simple white wording, and all that snowy bokeh, I was itching to translate it into a card. I debated how to get the door with vignette effect of the dark edges fading into a spotlight around the wreath. In the end, I decided that the simplest, most effective way was to use a couple of colours of Distress Oxide inks and blend them into a piece of Nina Solar White card. I pulled out Stormy Sky for the main colour, and black soot to create the vignette, so my card was slightly more bluey grey than the neutral grey of the inspiration piece, but I'm happy with how the colours came out. I started by blending Stormy Sky over the whole panel. This is a piece of Nina Solar White card, sized to fit an A2 card base. I wasn't too worried about getting it perfectly smooth, as I knew that I would be stamping and liberally splattering over the top of this. Once I got down the stormy sky layer, I then brought in black soot around the edges to get the vignette, after which I blended again with stormy sky and I went backwards and forwards between the two colours until I got the effect I was after. I did ponder on how to get the background to look like a door. I wondered about watercolouring or drawing lines with a black pen, but I wanted to keep the background simple so that the wreath and sentiment were the main focus. In the end, I decided on a subtle wood texture by using the designer wood grain stamp from Hero Arts. This is one of the first background stamps I ever bought and I still love it. I inked the stamp with Stormy Sky Distress Oxide and found the best way to do this was to swipe the ink pad up and down over the wood grain and then I brought in some black soot too around the edges as I wanted to get the same effect with the wood grain as I had over the rest of the card. I then placed the card on top of the stamp and thoroughly rubbed with my fingertips to make sure I had a really good impression. I love adding splatter to my cards and one of my favourite ways to do so is to use a solution of Perfect Pearls. I add a scoop or two of Perfect Pearls to a mini mister, top up with water and give it a good shake and then I use the tube from the bottle to splatter the sparkly mixture. In line with the inspiration piece I really went to town with the splatter and then set the background aside to dry while I worked on the rest of the card. For the wreath I'm going to use pieces of Nina Solar White card that I coloured with dye inks from Simon Says Stamp. I'm going to use Midnight Green, Sea Foam, Laurel Green, Dusty Sage and Cloudy Sky. The night before I filmed this video, I rubbed the inks over pieces of card and left them to dry. This is how I inked up the pieces of card, simply by rubbing the ink pad directly onto the card surface. Now there are two reasons why it's a good idea to leave the ink to dry before using the card. Firstly, as you can see here, the ink smooths out and lightens as it dries, and so you get the true colour to work with. Secondly, if you try to die cut from the card before it is fully dry, you'll find that your die cuts get stuck in the die and become misshapen when you try and pull them out. I dug through my die collection looking for any small, delicate foliage dies. Some of these dies are winter foliage such as the Pine Needle Wreath and Holly Collage. However, I found I use the leaf sprig from the Forget Me Not Flowers dies a lot and that certainly isn't intended as a winter leaf. I think the colours that you use for die cutting and the addition of snowflakes later on all add up to the card being dressed for winter. In total I used the following dies to create my wreath. Pine Needle Trio, Forget Me Not Flowers, Pine Needle Wreath, Holly Collage, Leaf Circle and during the making of the wreath I thought a few snowflakes would be nice and for those I used the Sparkling Snowflakes Breeze die to cut a few small snowflakes. So I'm now ready to start die cutting. I used a Spellbinders Pattern M6 to die cut and as some of the dies are quite intricate I included a metal shim in the die cutting sandwich so that I got a nice clean cut. Once I'd run the sandwich through the die cutter I popped the die cuts out into a small bowl to keep them all together. Sometimes die cuts get stuck and to release them there's a tool from Spellbinders I sometimes use or this craft pick from Tim Holtz. Both are great to release the die by poking through the small holes on the back of the die. I spent a few minutes busily die cutting lots of different foliage from the various colours of card and I'm now starting to think about how to adhere them to the card front. I've decided to die cut a ring which I can foam mount onto the card front to give me a guide as to where to adhere the die cuts and also to add more dimension. 
I used two nested circle dies from Samsa Stamp and ran them through my die cutting machine with white card and then I used the same two colours of Distress Ink to colour the ring so that it would blend into the background if any of it was still visible once I'd constructed the wreath. There's one last thing I want to do though before building the wreath and that's to add some Tim Holtz Distress Glitter in rock candy to some of the pine needles. This is my all time favourite glitter for this time of year as it adds lovely sparkle and sugar texture. I used a range of multimedia mat and squeezed a blob onto my craft mat before taking a leaf and rubbing the glue over the leaf with my finger and then quickly dunking into the glitter. I covered all the pine needle sprigs and glitter and having done so it's now time to make the wreath. I've cut a thin piece of foam tape and removed the backer so that the tape will bend easily to the shape of the ring and then I've attached the ring to the centre top of the background panel. To attach the foliage to the ring I'm going to dip the ends of each leaf into Ranger Multimedia Matte and then press down onto the ring. Ranger Multimedia Matte is a strong fast drying glue that dries as the name suggests matte and so won't be noticeable if any squidges out. I'm attaching all the leaves pointing in the same clockwise direction around the wreath and concentrating on spreading colours around. I'm also pointing the leaves either slightly outwards or inwards towards the centre to fill the wreath and make it appear fuller. Now this did take a little time to do, especially as I couldn't resist filling this wreath to overflowing. I used many of the die cuts I'd originally cut, but also found I liked the little leaf sprig from the Forget Me Not set and ended up cutting several more of these to work into the wreath. As you can see, because I added a lot to this, the supporting ring is not visible by the end and equally I'm glad I didn't make more fuss of the background panel because by the time I'd finished, you really don't see that much of it. It was at this point that I decided a few snowflakes were in order and I cut those from white card using the Snowflakes Breeze die. This die cuts a lovely stitch pattern into card but it also die cuts some tiny snowflakes which were the perfect size to tuck in amongst the leaves. I carried on adding the snowflakes and more and more of the leaves until the wreath was bursting with dimension. I love the way that all the foliage overlaps and tucks into one another just as the leaves on a real wreath would. Once I told myself to stop adding any more I then splattered with perfect pearl solution so that the snowy bokeh look would also continue over the wreath as well as the background. I then started to add embellishments using Nouveau Crystal Drops in Simply White and Duck Egg Blue. I will say I didn't get the roundest of droplets and I think that is because of all the texture on the wreath. It was hard to find a flat surface to squeeze the droplets onto. Moving on to the sentiment and in line with the inspiration I die cut the Happy Christmas die from White Card. This die comes with delicate script wording as well as a shadow die but I chose to use the delicate script as I felt it went better with the design. I added lots of tiny little pieces of foam adhesive to the back of the words. You could cut several of each word and layer them on top of one another to get a more dimensional sentiment, but I find I lose the elegant look when I do that and prefer just a single layer with foam adhesive to give dimension. I kept the dot of the eye in place with Ranger Multimedia Matte and then I felt I could squeeze a little more sparkle onto the wreath in the form of Dewdop Diamonds. These are from Little Things from Lucy's Cards. These diamonds are very dimensional but they do have a small flat area on the back and I used that surface with more range of multimedia matte to add them to the wreath. Finally I added the finished panel to a Nina Soda White card base in the £110 weight to give a sturdy base to cater for all the dimension on this card. And that completes this card using inspiration from the front cover of a closed catalogue to create this die cut winter wreath on a wooden door. On the Santa Stamp blog you'll find a coordinating blog post as well as all the details of the supplies I've used today. If you want to find me, I blog over at limedoododesign.com. I want to thank you for joining me today, and I'll see you next time.